Hold on tight, we're diving into the Earth's most awe-inspiring and terrifying moments, from the sudden jolt of an earthquake to the unstoppable surge of a tsunami. Nature's fury knows no bounds. Roaring tornadoes, relentless hurricanes and landslides that bury all in their path. These forces shape our world and our fate, but what drives these destructive phenomena? Join us as we uncover the science behind Earth's wrath and witness the raw power that reminds us of our place on this planet. Get ready to feel the Earth move under your feet. We're talking earthquakes. Earthquakes happen when there's a sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust. This usually comes from tectonic plates colliding, sliding past each other, or one plate being forced under another. Boom! Seismic waves shake the ground. Most quakes hit along plate boundaries. The Ring of Fire, which circles the Pacific Ocean, is a quake hotspot. Places like Japan, Chile, and the west coast of North America really feel the shake. We measure earthquakes with two main scales. The Richter scale, or its modern cousin, the Moment Magnitude scale, tells us the energy released. The modified Mercalli Intensity Scale measures how it felt and what it did to buildings and people. The strongest recorded quake ever was in 1960 in Valdivia, Chile with a whopping 9.5 magnitude. It caused widespread destruction and over 5,000 deaths. Other biggies include the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami quake, which led to a devastating tsunami and over 230,000 deaths, and the 2011 Tohoku quake in Japan, causing a tsunami and over 15,000 deaths. But size isn't everything. The 2010 Haiti quake was a 7.0 but caused massive devastation due to poor building structures, resulting in over 160,000 deaths. Earthquakes remind us just how dynamic our planet is. So, next time you feel a rumble, you'll know what's rocking your world. Did you know that beneath our feet lies an incredible force, ready to burst forth at any moment? That's right, I'm talking about volcanoes. These natural wonders form when molten rock, or magma, from beneath the Earth's crust, makes its way to the surface. This usually happens at tectonic plate boundaries, where plates either move apart or collide. But wait, there's more. Hotspots, areas where the Earth's mantle is especially hot, can also create volcanoes far from plate edges like those in Hawaii. Most volcanoes are found along the famed Ring of Fire around the Pacific Ocean, but you'll also find them at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and hotspots like Iceland and Hawaii. There are three main types of volcanoes to know about. First up, shield volcanoes. These have broad, gentle slopes and are formed by low-viscosity lava that can travel long distances. Think Mauna Loa in Hawaii. Next we've got stratovolcanoes, also known as composite volcanoes. These are steep, cone-shaped, and can be very explosive. Mount Fuji in Japan is a prime example. Finally, there are cinder cone volcanoes. These are small, steep-sided, and built from ash and lava fragments. Paracutan in Mexico is a classic cinder cone. Now let's dive into some of the most powerful volcanic eruptions in history. Mount Tambora in Indonesia erupted in 1815 the most powerful recorded eruption with around 71,000 deaths, mostly from famine and disease caused by ash fallout. It triggered the year without a summer globally. Krakatoa, also in Indonesia, erupted in 1883 causing huge tsunamis and around 36,000 deaths. It destroyed most of the island and darkened skies worldwide. Mount Pelee in Martinique erupted in 1902, unleashing pyroclastic flows that destroyed the city of Saint-Pierre and caused about 30,000 deaths in minutes. In 1912, Novorupta in Alaska had the largest eruption of the 20th century. Thankfully, its remote location meant little loss of life, but the ash fallout and landscape destruction were massive. Mount Vesuvius in Italy, famous for burying Pompeii and Herculaneum in 79 AD, caused around 16,000 deaths. And lastly, Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991 after centuries of dormancy. Despite around 800 deaths, massive evacuations prevented a much larger catastrophe. Volcanoes are a powerful reminder of nature's raw force. Tornadoes are serious business, and we need to understand just how powerful they can be. We're looking at some of the strongest tornadoes ever. Tornadoes happen when warm, wet air crashes into cold, dry air, causing a big swirl in the sky. Throw in some different wind speeds, we call that wind shear, and boom, you've got a spinning column of air that can touch down and cause major damage. 
Tornado Alley, right here in the middle of the U.S., is where a lot of tornadoes happen, but they can also show up in places like Canada, Argentina, Bangladesh, and other parts of the world. Let's talk about the different kinds. Rope tornadoes are skinny like a rope. Cone tornadoes are wider and stronger. Wedge tornadoes are huge and super dangerous, and multiple vortex tornadoes are a messy mix of smaller tornadoes all spinning together. Get ready, because now we're going to talk about four of the deadliest tornadoes in history. The Tri-State Tornado of 1925 tore through Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana, and sadly, more than 695 people died. In 1989, the Dalitpur Saturia Tornado in Bangladesh destroyed entire towns and killed about 1,300 people. The 2011 Joplin Tornado flattened a lot of Joplin, Missouri, killing 158 people and costing billions of dollars in damage. And finally, the 2013 Moore Tornado in Oklahoma had winds over 200 miles an hour. It killed 24 people and caused a ton of damage. Tornadoes remind us how strong nature can be. Always take tornadoes seriously. Now we're diving into the world of tsunamis. These massive waves can unleash unimaginable fury, and I'm here to explain exactly how they work. First up, what causes tsunamis? Most of the time, it's underwater earthquakes. Think of a sudden vertical movement of the sea floor, but they can also be triggered by volcanic eruptions, landslides, or even asteroid impacts. Essentially anything that displaces a huge amount of water in a short time. Now where do these monstrous waves strike the most? Tsunamis love to hang around the Pacific Ocean, especially along the Ring of Fire, so places like Japan, Indonesia, Chile, and the U.S. West Coast are hotspots. If you live there, keep your eyes on that ocean. Now let's talk speed. In deep water, tsunami waves can travel up to 800 kmh, that's as fast as a jet plane. They slow down near land but grow much taller, leading to devastating impacts. Here are the four most powerful tsunami events in history. First, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami, triggered by a 9.19.3 magnitude earthquake off Sumatra. It caused over 230,000 deaths across 14 countries, with waves reaching up to 30 meters high. Next, the 2011 Tohoku tsunami in Japan. A 9.1 magnitude earthquake led to around 20,000 deaths and a massive nuclear disaster at Fukushima. Some waves reached 40 meters. The 1883 Krakatoa tsunami in Indonesia was triggered by the volcanic eruption of Krakatoa. It caused over 36,000 deaths and giant waves that changed local geography. Finally, the 1755 Lisbon earthquake and tsunami in Portugal. This combo devastated Lisbon, causing an estimated 60,000-100,000 deaths across Portugal, Spain, and Morocco. So, there you have it, tsunamis in a nutshell. These waves are as fascinating as they are frightening. I'm diving into the world of hurricanes, nature's most powerful storms. Let's talk about how these fierce giants form and the devastation they can cause. Hurricanes start over warm ocean waters, at least 26 degrees Celsius or 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Moist air rises, creating a low-pressure area, and as the system organizes, it spins due to the Earth's rotation, forming a storm fueled by ocean heat. This is the magic of the Coriolis effect. These storms mainly occur in the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico, hitting North and Central America. In the Western Pacific, they're called typhoons, and in the Indian Ocean, they're cyclones. Now hurricanes are categorized by the Saffir-Simpson scale. Category 1, winds 119-153 km per h, 74-95 miles per hour, minimal damage. Category 2, 154. 177 kilometers per h, 96 110 miles per hour, moderate damage. Category 3, major, 178, 208 kilometers per h, 111 129 miles per hour, devastating damage. Category 4, 209 251 kilometers per h, 130 156 miles per hour, catastrophic damage. Category 5, 252 plus KMH, 157 plus MBAC, catastrophic and widespread destruction. The winds can reach over 300 km per H in extreme cases, but the storm itself usually moves at 1540 km per H across oceans or land. Let's look at four of the most powerful hurricanes ever. Hurricane Katrina, 2005, 
a Category 5 at peak, made landfall as a Category 3, over 1,800 deaths and $125 billion in damage, it devastated New Orleans due to levee failures. Hurricane Mitch, 1998, a Category 5, around 11,000 deaths, mainly due to flooding and mudslides in Central America. The Great Galveston Hurricane, 1900, estimated Category 4, about 6,000, 12,000 deaths, the deadliest natural disaster in U.S. history. Hurricane Maria, 2017, a Category 5, over 3,000 deaths, mostly in Puerto Rico, and around $90 billion in damages. Severe infrastructure collapse. How do we track these monsters? Satellites monitor oceans 24 sevenths, spotting storms as they form. Coastal radar tracks them as they approach land. Hurricane hunter planes fly into storms to measure wind speed, pressure, and temperature. Buoys and ships collect ocean data like wave heights and sea temperatures. Scientists use computer models to predict where the hurricane will go, how strong it will get, and how much rain, storm surge, and wind to expect. When a storm threatens land, alerts like Hurricane Watch and Hurricane Warning are issued to give people time to prepare and, if necessary, evacuate. So, always stay informed and be prepared during hurricane season. We are diving now into a topic that might surprise you droughts. They might sound less dramatic than hurricanes or earthquakes, but trust me, they're super dangerous. So, what exactly causes a drought? Droughts happen when there's a long period of much lower than normal rainfall. High temperatures, dry winds, and poor water management can make things worse. And natural climate patterns like El Nino? They shift weather systems around and can trigger these dry spells. You might think droughts only happen in deserts, but they can occur almost anywhere. However, they hit hardest in places like the Horn of Africa, the Sahel region, the southwestern United States, and parts of Australia, India, and Brazil. Now, there are different types of droughts. Meteorological droughts involve less rain than usual over a long time. Agricultural droughts mean there's not enough soil moisture for crops. Hydrological droughts see rivers, lakes, and aquifers running low. And then there's socioeconomic drought, which impacts people's lives like causing food shortages or higher prices. One of the scariest things about droughts? They develop slowly. Unlike a sudden tornado, droughts creep up over weeks, months, or even years. Let's look at four of the most severe drought events. The Dust Bowl in the USA during the 1930s combined severe drought with poor farming practices, creating massive dust storms that forced hundreds of thousands to abandon their farms. The Sahel drought in Africa from 1968 to 1985 led to one of the worst famines in history, with over 100,000 deaths. Australia's Millennium Drought drastically reduced water supplies in major cities from 1997 to 2010, resulting in huge economic losses. And the California Drought from 2011 to 2017 caused severe impacts on farming, wildfires and water shortages, with economic damage estimated at $3.8 billion in agriculture alone. Predicting droughts involves monitoring rainfall, soil moisture, river levels, and weather patterns using satellites and climate models. Managing droughts, governments focus on water conservation, irrigation improvements, drought-resistant crops, and emergency water supplies. Early warning systems help communities prepare before things get critical. Speaking of drought-resistant crops, ever heard of sorghum, millet, cassava, cowpeas, or tepary beans? These hardy crops survive with little water and are often grown in those drought-prone areas. This is why you need to know about wildfires. They can move faster than a car, destroy entire towns, and even change the landscape forever. Wildfires can start from lightning strikes, careless human actions like campfires, discarded cigarettes, or even arson. Sometimes volcanic eruptions light the spark. Dry conditions, scorching heat, and strong winds make these fires spread like, well, wildfire. They're most common in hot, dry regions like the western United States, Australia, the Mediterranean, and parts of South America and Africa. There are three types you should know about. Ground fires burn organic material below the surface. Surface fires scorch grass and low plants. Crown fires? They burn the tops of trees and are the most intense and dangerous. A wildfire can move as fast as 22 kilometers per H in forests, and up to a blistering 60 kilometers per H in grasslands with strong winds. Some of the deadliest fires in history include the Peshtigo Fire, USA 1871, deadliest wildfire in U.S. history, around 1,500-2,500 deaths in Wisconsin, Australian Black Saturday Fires, Australia 2009, 
173 deaths and destroyed over 2,000 homes. Greek wildfires, Greece 2018, over 100 deaths, especially in the town of Mati. Campfire USA 2018, 85 deaths and destroyed the town of Paradise, California, over $16.5 billion in damages. Detecting these fiery menaces involves satellites, fire lookout towers, drones, and public reports. Special infrared sensors can even see through smoke. To fight them, firefighters use engines, bulldozers, helicopters, and planes. Controlled burns and clearing dry vegetation can help prevent fires from spreading. Wildfires are a force of nature we can't afford to ignore. Ever wondered what makes the Earth move? We're diving into the fascinating world of landslides. So what exactly causes landslides? It's all about gravity. When gravity pulls loose soil, rocks, or debris down a slope, that's when a landslide happens. Heavy rain, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or even human activities like mining or deforestation can trigger these dramatic events. Landslides love mountainous and hilly regions. Think the Himalayas, the Andes, the Rocky Mountains, and parts of Japan, Italy, and Indonesia. Now let's talk types. Rockfalls are the sudden freefall of rocks. Debris flows are fast-moving mixtures of mud, rocks, and water, and slumps are slow, downward sliding of earth in a curved shape. Did you know that some landslides creep along at a few meters per year? But others, like debris flows, can rush downhill at over 80 kilometers per h or 50 miles per hour? Let's look at some of the most destructive landslide events in history. In 1999, the Vargas tragedy in Venezuela saw torrential rain trigger landslides leading to 10,000 to 30,000 deaths. The Yungay landslide in Peru, 1970, was an earthquake-triggered avalanche that buried the town with about 20,000 deaths. The Haiyuan landslide in China, 1920, caused over 100,000 deaths following an earthquake. And more recently, the Oso landslide in the USA, 2014, resulted in 43 deaths after a sudden slope collapse in Washington state. So how do we keep an eye on these natural events? Landslides are monitored using satellites, ground sensors, and rain gauges to detect soil movement and heavy rainfall. Prevention is key. Engineers build retaining walls, drainage systems, and reforest slopes. That means planting trees to stabilize the land and reduce landslide risks. There you have it. Next time you hear about a landslide, you'll know exactly what's going on. Floods sound simple, right? Just a lot of water everywhere. But the truth is, floods are a powerful force of nature and understanding them could save your life. So let's break it down. Floods happen when water spills onto land that's usually dry. This can be caused by heavy rain, overflowing rivers, coastal storm surges, dam breaks, or even rapid snowmelt. And while floods can happen almost anywhere, they hit hardest near rivers, on coasts, and in low-lying places. Think the Ganges Basin in India and Bangladesh, the Mississippi River in the U.S., or the Netherlands, where keeping water out is basically a national sport. There are different types of floods too. River floods are when rivers overflow after days of rain. Flash floods? Those are the sudden ones, hitting within minutes or hours after intense downpours. Super dangerous because they give almost no warning. Coastal floods are driven by hurricanes pushing seawater inland, and urban floods happen when cities just can't drain water fast enough. Some floods can rise slowly, giving you time to react, but flash floods form incredibly fast, sometimes in just minutes. That's why they're so deadly. History has seen some truly catastrophic floods. China's 1931 floods, possibly the deadliest ever, killed up to 4 million people. In 1998, floods in Bangladesh submerged two-thirds of the country. The North Sea flood of 1953 devastated Europe, and in 2010, Pakistan's floods affected 20 million people. So how do we know when floods are coming? Scientists use weather forecasts, river gauges, and even satellites to predict them. Governments build levees, issue warnings, and plan evacuations, while it's smart for you to keep an emergency kit ready just in case. Floods are serious, but understanding them is the first step to staying safe. Stay alert, stay informed, and be ready. It could make all the difference. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into natural phenomena. Stay safe out there.